Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Polar alignment without using the North Star. A new app in Nina called Three Point Polar Alignment. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Polar alignment is extremely important for getting good tracking for long exposures into astrophotography. Now with a, a decent polar alignment, you can get away with a, perhaps a minute exposure. But after two minutes, you're going to start seeing your stars shaped a little bit more like eggs instead of round circles. However, if you properly polar align your scope, you should be able to get some nice round stars, even up to five minute exposures. Now, to get a 10 minute exposure, you have to be extremely accurate on your polar alignment. One of the reasons I have the telescope raised so high, of course, one is to see over the top of the roof. The other was to see the star Polaris so I could properly polar align. Now, prior to this new app, the way I've been polar aligning is using the QHY Pole Master. It does a fantastic job in aligning the telescope. Uh, but after about five minutes, I notice I start getting these little egg-shaped stars. Uh, so my polar alignment is off just a little bit. So the key here is, can I polar align? And do I need to see Polaris with this new three-point polar alignment app in Nina, you don't even have to look at the North Star. It doesn't hurt, but if you can't see the North Star, or if you have a target, say over here, like M16, uh, the Eagle Nebula, I can have my scope aligned to that and then polar align on the Eagle Nebula. Let's take a look. You know, the, the first thing you really got to do is, obviously, if you don't have Nina, is to download Nina from their website. It's easy to get to and load in Nina and make sure you have the plate solving uh, system set up. It's very important because this uses plate solving to do the three-point alignment. So let's start with the three-point alignment right now. Here we go. Over here in Nina, uh, the uh, three-point alignment is right over here, but I already have it down here. So it's right here, three-point alignment. Right now, I have the telescope pointing at M16, the Eagle Nebula. It's not pointing at the North Star or Polaris. So let's take a look, see if we can uh, polar line this telescope looking at the southern sky. Here we go. All right, I have it all set up and I'm going to do a, a one by one binning. I've got the gain set at 139, which is the ASI ZWO camera uh, default setting, the uh, unity gain. I'm going to take six second exposures and uh, there's no filter, so I don't have to worry about that. It's a one-shot color camera. And uh, start from the position, current position, I want on. All right, here we go. Let's start. So once we hit start, the first thing it's gonna do is take a picture. That's what we're doing right now. And there's the first picture there. Now it's gonna take two more pictures as it slews to a little bit different location in the sky. The second picture, point two. It's doing that right now. Taking the picture after the mount has settled. And there it is. And now it's going to take a third one. It's solved that. Now it's going to start taking the measurement differences and it's going to tell me what to do with the mount, with the azimuth and the altitude. All right, it's thinking, solving. All right, I'm 22 minutes and 31 seconds off on the uh, azimuth and the altitude, uh, I'm off by four minutes and three seconds. So it tells me to move left or to the west. Now, over here, are my, 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 uh, this is the left and this is the right. So I'm gonna move the left in quite a bit, 22 to 22 minutes. Let's just do it right there. And I'm gonna bring the mount down a little bit. Bring it down, yeah. Uh, 
I need to unlock it there. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens. So my total error to begin with was five minutes of arc. Actually, to begin with, it was 22. So I need to move down. Did I go the wrong way? I might have gone the wrong way. Let's try that again. Down 20 minutes over, move right to the east. So I went past it. So let's go back up. Let's do that. And see what happens here. Solving. So now I'm within one minute on the altitude and four minutes on the azimuth. Move right. And so, wow. Well, let's bring it back the other way. I'll take that any day. Altitude, one second of arc error. Zero. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take this. I, I'm not going to touch the azimuth. So let's see what happens here. Let's stop this. Now let's take a, um, uh, a three minute picture. No, well, first of all, let's start with 60 seconds. One minute. I wanted to track. Track rate, sidereal. I wasn't tracking. My bad. All right, now we're tracking. You know, it helps to tell the mount to track. Let's see what um, it says over here in the uh, telescope. Tracking ray. Let's let's just make sure it's on sidereal. Okay. You know that does help. Let's see if this makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, I think tracking does help. Uh, it got off of the um, constellation, but still, uh, it's tracking now. Um, let's take a look at the. It looks a little egg shape here. Well, let's see what happens when we put the tracking on. Uh, well, that's not bad, but uh, let's, well, first of all, let's go back to the uh, framing. And let's go back to slew and center. It's now settling. By the sound of it, it wasn't off by all that much. Pretty close here. <laughs> I guess so. It's right smack dab in the middle. It found it. What was my error here? Uh, PhD2, let's um, da -da, take the stars, multi-star, go ahead and start tracking, it's guiding, okay, let's go back to Nina, I should have my guide down here, bring this up just a little bit, okay. And uh, let's take a, a picture. 60 second picture here with the guiding on. And my guide error at the moment is 0 0.65, 0 0.62. See it right here? 4.73. Here's the image. What do you think? Let's zoom in. They look pretty round to me. Might be a touch out of focus, but they're round. All right, let's try. Uh, we'll, we'll go for a, a, a th 300 second. Yeah, you know, within the Eagle Nebula is, is what you have the uh, the pillars of creation, the famous image made 
famous by the Hubble Space Telescope about 20 years ago. And now it seems like every amateur astronomer like me can get the almost the same thing. Of course, I got all these lights on out here too, so that's not going to help to cause any. Um, it, it seems to be working somewhat, but I got the porch lights on. I got my uh, fill light on, the computer light on from the uh, tab, the uh, tablet here or the uh, uh, laptop. All kinds of light coming in on me right now, so it's not the darkest. It's not the darkest. It's undark. Yeah, see, there it is. All the light, all the light pollution here. Well, let's turn this off and let's see. Let's just zoom in. You know, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. I think I'm tight, a little bit out of focus. I didn't do an autofocus, but I'm not, I'm not um, disappointed with this at all. In order to use this feature, you must use the beta version of Nina and the nightly build. And there you can add on the plugins. And this plugin here is very easy to install. And once you have it installed, it's very easy to use. You don't even have to look at the North Star. Last night I had tracking at 10 minutes per frame and the stars were perfectly round. Check out the Cocoon Nebula. So, unless you need rain, everyone, clear skies.